Now it's time for my special guest. She's an award-winning journalist, star of the hit podcast Caliphate, and she's quite possibly one of the bravest women on the planet. ISIS is the latest incarnation of a war we have been fighting now for nearly two decades. This is clearly a case of good versus evil. We will continue to hunt down terrorists and dismantle their networks. I'm going to bomb the shit out of them. It's true. Despite the billions of dollars we have spent, despite the thousands of lives that have been lost, there are more terrorists now than there were on the eve of September 11th. I am trying to answer one question. Who are they? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rukmini Kalamaki. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Now, uh, you have a podcast called Caliphate, which yes. I greatly enjoyed. Yes. Can you explain to the, uh, the viewers what it is? So I covered the Islamic State for the New York Times, mm -hmm. and this podcast is my attempt to explain to the world what I have learned about this terrorist group. I do it through the vehicle of a young man named Huzaifa, a Canadian, uh, who joined ISIS allegedly committed crimes um, uh, for them and returned to Canada. Um, through a source of mine, I was able to find his Instagram account. Yeah. Through that, we were able to deduce his real name. Through his real name, we found his LinkedIn and we found his email address. Yeah. And I sent him an email mm -hmm. and to my true surprise, he wrote back and said that he was willing to be interviewed. And through his story, uh, we learn about this group and th the pull of this group and we try to understand what motivates people like him. Why do you think social media is so important? You know, um, I, I came across an old Al-Qaeda training manual, and that training manual um, uh, talked about how the recruiter should go and hang out at the mosque, see who is kind of lagging behind, who doesn't have any friends, try to become friends with them. So basically, recruitment was a physical act that involved an actual physical connection with, with, with a person. Yeah. What the internet has done is, just, just as Tinder has completely revolutionized dating, Yeah. So too, Instagram and Twitter and Tumblr and all of these other engines that they use have, have made it so that recruiters can, can use nothing more than a Wi-Fi signal to be able to reach into people's living rooms yeah, right. and pick up somebody like Huzaifa. Huzaifa had never met an actual member of ISIS until he reached uh, the Islamic State in Syria. It strikes me that they're, they're not dissimilar to kind of people that follow the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> like, like in the vulnerable people yes. who are looking for a better life. That's right. And these kind of false idols suggest them. That's right. The, of all of the ISIS members that I've profiled and that, that I've spoken to, there's always the sense that they somehow didn't find their place in life. Yeah. Um, but, but unfortunately, this is kind of like, you know, this is an experience of almost all of us go yeah. through a phase where we're trying to figure out what, what our identity is. Absolutely, yeah. And, Particularly um, when you're young. When you're young, yeah. yeah. Surely there has to be a, a better way of yeah. trying to stop terror rather than just bombing the shit out of them. Maybe it does make sense to kind of really hit Instagram and Snapchat hard. The government, at least in America, has tried to do this, but they've done it in such a flat-footed way that it, has, it, it really hasn't worked. And I think that's a reflection of the fact that ISIS yeah. is an organization that is run by millennials, yeah. and the FBI is not, you know? Right. And the CIA is not. You move up in rank, typically after a decade or more of yeah, service, and so right. you end up being in your late 30s, 40s, 50s, when you, when you end up being a special agent in charge of these efforts. And just as my mom is not on yeah. Twitter, yeah, right. so too many of the people in government that are, that are talking about this are not digital natives. So we need millennials to go on Instagram to stop it. I've got quite a few cousins that are out of work at the minute. <laughs> and they would be amazing. Seriously, me? You don't want to join ISIS? Come around my way. <laughs> and you've been trolled by ISIS as well, I understand. I have been trolled by ISIS. What is that like? As far as being trolled by anyone, I can't think of anyone more terrifying than ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the threats I've gotten, you know, range from the usual, you know, um, we should slaughter her and teach all journalists a lesson. The, the typical, you know, let's kill her. The to, typical? To, well, <laughs> so you, are, you know, I get the usual, they're gonna kill me, but, you know. yeah. Of course, that does, you know, work on my psyche once in a while, and I have found myself feeling very scared. Yeah. Um, but I also know that, that the reason they're doing this is to scare me. Yes. And so a way to, a way to resist them is to not be scared, right? Um, but, then, but then 
they are millennials. They're yeah. very young, and some of them are teenagers. Yeah. And so some of the some of the trolling I've gotten from them is just super personal, super juvenile. Yeah. Uh, for example, I think that they picked up that I'm sensitive about my weight. Right. So there's this one particular ISIS troll that has taken to calling me oink mini, yeah. oink mini, like yeah. a pig, fat machi, <laughs> to basically fat shame me, I guess. Yeah. And are you tempted to just write back, goat fucker? <laughs> <laughs> This is where you need my cousins. <laughs> um, when, were you, when were you most scared? Um, there was a period of time in... So starting in 2015, the FBI began to come at regular intervals to my office right. to see myself and my editors uh, to warn us of what they considered to be real threats uh, against me. Um, they told me that they had alerted the, the precinct captain uh, to that area and that if I ever felt... Uh, ill at ease, I should call 911. Yeah. This was a period of time when my husband was working the night shift. Right. So I was, our house happens to be old and very creaky. Um, and so starting at 11 p.m., I was home alone, uh, and he was gone until 6 a.m. The, you know, the next day. And at around 12.30 at night, I was getting ready to go to bed, and suddenly our Rhodesian Ridgeback, our dog, yeah. started growling, just you know, like this. And seconds later, the doorbell started to ring, and it was 12.30 in the morning, and really aggressive ringing. And, and I really panicked, and I thought to myself, yeah. like, what, what is this, you know? Yeah. Um, and so I, I didn't know what to do, but I ended up, I mean, I was thinking to myself, the FBI said, call 911. So I called 911, I called 911 and proceeded to have just this really weird conversation with, with the lady where I said, um, hi, I'm, I'm Rukmini Kalimaki and I cover ISIS for the New York Times and I've had some threats against me and the FBI said that I should call you if, I, if anything ever happens and there's somebody ringing my doorbell. And I, I'll never forget the tone of the lady who said, ma'am, do you think ISIS is ringing your doorbell? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I realized how insane it was, you know, that yeah. I had called her. She was nice enough to say, I'm going to call you back. Like, stay where you are, I'm going to call you back. Yeah, yeah. And she called me back five minutes later. It felt like forever. Yeah. Um, and I had peeked out from under, you know, from the bedroom, and I could, I could see a shadow of somebody, you know, outside. Yeah. And she called me back five minutes later, and she said, ma'am, there's been a water main break on your street. Yeah. And it's the water department that is going door to door to let you know oh, that there God. might be flooding. <laughs> Um, and that was the moment when I realized they'd gotten into my head. Pinnell. Yeah. One of the things, that, I don't know if you're famous for this, but one of your tricks yes. is you go through ISIS's bins. Yeah. I started doing this actually in Africa when I was covering um, Al-Qaeda in yeah. Mali. And I, and I did it, in fact, completely by mistake. You guys know that Timbuktu is a real place, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, when we got to Timbuktu, the locals led me to the buildings that Al-Qaeda had occupied. Mm -hmm. They had basically just fled, you know, sort of in the days before. Yeah. And they didn't have time to destroy or pack up the stuff that they had right. left behind. Yeah. And I found thousands of pages of the records. And that was actually the beginning of this beat for me because in those records was a completely different narrative about this group than I was getting from the officials I was calling of course, of in course. Washington. Of course. Have you ever found anything really strange in one of their bins that's just like, whoa? One of the pieces of paper that I found in that stash was a letter from Al Qaeda. Yeah. Uh, reprimanding a guy called Mokhtar Bel Mokhtar, who was a very famous terrorist in Africa, yeah. for a host of offenses, among them not turning in his expense reports on time. Really? <laughs> this so it's is Al Qaeda realized. expenses. Al Qaeda expenses wow. expects its fighters to yeah. turn in expense reports to justify cash advances. They need to track their resources. Yeah, right. And just just as I am going to go back to my hotel tonight and 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 you know put in my expenses yeah, for yeah. what I'm doing so that I can justify my cash advance. Yeah. Um, so too they have to. But I doubt yours is Semtex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Right. So we hear your president uh, talking a lot about how. You know, he's winning, he's defeating ISIS. How do you assess Trump's attitude? Politicians come and go, and all of them, at some point, do the mission accomplished. Um, right, 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 right. Yeah. They, no politician can, can get to the end of the, their term and look as if they've been weak on terror and look as if terror has somehow gotten out of hand. Yeah. Now, as it happens, Trump does have some successes to point to, which is the territorial defeat of the yeah. Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. So we've conflated two things, you know, ISIS and the territory holding aspect of it and ISIS the terrorist group. ISIS the terrorist group remains alive and strong. Yeah. It's continuing to try to attack the West. Thankfully, law enforcement is, 
is getting wise to their ways and has been foiling these attacks, but by no means are they defeated. Yeah. On the eve of 9-11, there were just a few hundred Al-Qaeda members all over the world. Just really? a few hundred. Okay. Yeah. Just in Iraq and Syria today, the United Nations and the Pentagon Inspector General estimate that there are at least 30,000 uh, ISIS fighters just in Iraq and Syria. Right. I think one of the ways that I think we can defeat ISIS is through human connection. Yes. Because um, there was something that I, um, I listened to that one of the members of yes. ISIS was a huge fan of a singer <laughs> that you wouldn't ordinarily think members of ISIS would be a fan of. George Michael? George Michael. That's right. <laughs> the idea that there, is, that there is a Muslim member of ISIS singing, Last Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But it, it, that, the very fact that they're into George Michael, like, there feels like this human connection there. Completely. Do you know what I mean? That you can, you can win over. Yeah. But you talk about human connection. Yeah. And I think one of the ways that ISIS thrives is they're trying to eliminate the, the gray space. Yeah. And the gray space is the areas of the world where moderate Muslims are able to live in harmony with, with other people. Yeah. They want to create this complete cleavage where there's Islam on one side and every other religion on the other. And so what is happening in the world right now where Muslims are being attacked, where girls wearing the hijab are having their hijabs uh, yanked off, all of that helps ISIS. Yeah. It helps them. Mm. It makes moderate Muslims who are not the enemy feel as if they are targeted. Yeah. So when we talk about human connection, I think that's something that all of us can do um, is, is to make sure that our Muslim neighbors feel at home and feel, feel welcomed. What a remarkable person you are. It's lovely to Thank meet you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank give you. it up for the wonderful Rukmini Kalamaki. That was really great.